Seems like putting squirrels on a YouTube channel gets a whole lot of views. So I'm gonna I'm gonna record this squirrel for a bit right here. Hey. <laughs> Do you know Gus? We've got three new props from GemFan and they're all in the five inch category, which is kind of saturated. And that's kind of why I stopped doing prop videos in general. We had a whole bunch of really bad props from way back when, but then they got pretty decent and it became more about preference and the quad setup and what you were going for than anything else. Because the overall setup of the quad is more important than the prop itself, I'm gonna do this video a little bit differently. First, I'm gonna go over the actual GoPro and how I set up my GoPro and how I use it. Then I'll go over the quad itself and my specific kind of setup. And then I'll go over where the props kind of fit in the spectrum of props so that you can place them before we talk about the actual flight performance of the quad with the props on it. Let's talk about the payload real quick, which is our HD camera. There's a table of contents in the description below. You can skip the section if you want, but I'm gonna go over it real fast. So I choose to use a Hero 8, and I'm specifically flying my quad to record video almost all the time. You can fly for fun, but that's a different use case. This specific use case, I'm carrying a GoPro Hero 8. I choose the 8 over the 9 because it's a little bit smaller. It just fits on the quad a little bit easier. It's a little bit lighter. And the quality bump from the 8 to the 9 is not so significant. And the jobs that I'm doing are pretty much just influencers, real estate, various YouTube channels, nothing really significant. So the quality for them is more than enough. They're I haven't had a single client that was upset about the quality that they got, so I'm totally fine with that. But more important than the actual camera itself is how you set it up to get the footage that you want. So my specific style of footage is that I choose to use the highest quality, highest resolution that the camera has with 30 frames per second. I don't really shoot in 60 or above. I mean, I would love to, but the cameras just aren't quite as capable. So I stick to the highest resolution at 30 and I specifically set my shutter speed to 1120 max. And uh, that gives me a little bit of motion blur with the 30 frame per second, which looks really nice. And almost all content is at 30 or lower frame per second. So that's where I'm sticking to for now until I have a camera that can do a little bit better. Uh, but more important than the actual shutter speed, which is very important, is the ND filter that I put in front of the lens to help with any vibration that can cause jello and also to shade out the light because these cameras don't have active apertures so they can't stop down the light. They need something to block out the light and when you've locked the shutter speed to a maximum, it doesn't have its full dynamic range. So I allow it to go up and down the ISO range all at once, but I've pretty much cut the overall dynamic range in half or even less because I can't let it go way high in the uh, shutter speed, but I don't want it to go super high because then it starts looking like a flip book. Now taking a look at the quad, this is my number two quad. This is my backup quad when I go to film. And thankfully, knock on wood, I've never had to use my backup quad, which is a blessing and also what I strive for, which is reliability and just low stress when I go to do anything. Uh, unless the director wants me to put my quad in a sketchy situation, which they've done multiple times, in which case I tell them, you might only have two shots at this, but I'm happy to do it. Um, I don't really care if I break the quad, I just want the camera back. Nothing else really matters to me. Um, so looking at the quad itself, this quad is specifically designed for filming with a GoPro or similar with no props in view at about 20 degree camera tilt. And when I am recording or filming, I'm almost always at 20 degrees. When I'm flying for fun or these sorts of videos, my camera is usually around 25, 27 degrees. I put some little standoffs in the front just to bump it up a bit because I usually like flying a little bit quicker. On some jobs when I'm chasing like motorcycles and things that are going super fast, I need the extra speed. So I um, go with more tilt on the camera as well. It is running Emu Flight because it just works. The capacitor on the side, I do my cleanup in the design and not in the actual build. I kind of throw things together and make sure everything works really well. I don't pay attention to how cosmetically nice it is. But looking at the rest of the quad, this is a five inch quad. It does fit 5.25 inch props specifically on purpose. One of the props I'm gonna talk about is 5.21 inches. And the quad itself is not light. It's designed to be about 720 to 730 grams all up weight with the GoPro, the TPU case, everything all up weight. And in that includes a 1250 or 1400 milliamp 6S battery. This is only 6S. I only run 6S on my full five inch quads. Before talking about where these props fall in the spectrum of props, I wanna say that I jumped on the GemFan bandwagon 
when they came out with the 51466 because that prop was unusually fast and efficient, which are two things that kind of don't go hand in hand. And it also felt really nice to fly. It had good grip, had good control. But then when they came out with the 51433, which is kind of what I'm gonna base all these comparisons on, that prop quickly became my go-to prop because the lower pitch worked really well with the higher KV, higher RPM motors that we had already shifted to. The higher RPMs just tend to give us more throttle control and more feel when we're flying. It just seems to work out better to have lower pitch with higher RPMs. And a lot of the props have kind of gone that way over time as well. So the new props are the F3 and the F4, as well as the one that I personally worked on, which is the 5.21 inch prop. Adding or removing even one millimeter off the end of a blade makes a really significant difference in the flight performance. It makes a difference in the speed, the response, and the efficiency of the prop. Like all those are affected by just one millimeter adding and subtracting from the end of the prop. These days we've kind of settled on 5.1 inches as our kind of go-to five inch prop. But really the most useful range of blades is around 4.75 to around 5.25 inches. Once you go below 4.75, it starts feeling more like a four inch prop. Once you go past 5.25 inches, it starts feeling a lot more like a six inch prop. So that's kind of the spectrum that really feels the best, at least to me, in terms of response and all the features that five inches really where it's at. This is my personal preference. So if you think six or seven inch flies better, that's totally fine. That's your preference. So when we're looking at these blades, the things that matter are the blade diameter, the blade weight, and the blade pitch. And of course the airfoil and all everything else matters as well, but those are kind of the, one, the three things that we can actually look at and actually tell what the prop might be for. So the F3 and the F4, which I'm not really a fan of the naming scheme because they kind of just ripped off the naming scheme from HQ, but I guess it's a generic name scheme, so it doesn't really matter. These props are directly targeted at competing with the S3 and the S4. The F3 is about 3.4, 3.5 grams, and it's a three pitch and it's 5.078 inches, I believe, uh, 129 millimeters, and that's what they call 5.1 inches, or actually, I guess they compete with the P3 and the P4, or the, the 5.1 inch HQ variant. Uh, this blade is supposed to be very high response, not as much speed, but very high response. The F4 is supposed to be more powerful and faster, but also still high response. It weighs about, a tenth of a gram more, maybe a little bit less than a tenth of a gram more, but more importantly, because the pitch is steeper, it's going to have more aerodynamic drag, and so it's not going to be quite as high response as the as the F3. The 5.21 inch prop, we're actually going to call the I love you prop because 5.21 loosely translates to I love you in Chinese languages which is just funny, so we're gonna call it the, the I love you prop. This prop is specifically, it has a 2.6 pitch, and it's specifically designed for higher cruising speeds and higher efficiency, and it definitely does that. So be, that just slight extra prop blade gives you pretty notably higher cruising speed and pretty notably higher efficiency, especially with the lower 2.6 inch, 2.6 pitch, because you're kind of trading the high pitch for more prop length, which you don't really get all of the response. It's still lower response because prop length gives you more aerodynamic drag than just a, a little bit lower, a little bit higher pitch. But overall, it's a pretty balanced prop. We'll talk about it a little bit more when I'm flying it. So this is the I love you prop, 5.21 inches. This prop, we've gone through several props to arrive at this specific pitch and specific length prop. The goal of this prop is higher cruising speed. Personally, for me, I want these higher speeds and higher efficiencies because sometimes I'm chasing subjects that are on motorcycles or something and they're cruising pretty quick and I need to keep up with them and it's just annoying to have to trade batteries out every four minutes, five minutes. It's just frustrating. So if I can get more flight time or if I'm just hovering around waiting for something to start, it just is easier to have more flight time and have this higher efficiency of the blade. But at the same time, longer blades tend to give you higher cruising speeds and in this case, higher top speeds as well. So this is really nice 
for filming and for just general flying because I like flying fast, so I want that high speed. And on, in addition, the 2.6 pitch was aimed at trying to manage the loss of response. So this prop is the least responsive prop of the bunch, and it's it's definitely just less responsive than the F3 and the F4, unfortunately, but it's not quite as unresponsive as it could be because the lower pitch does reduce the aerodynamic drag. However, the higher weight, even just tenths of a gram higher weight, is going to make a difference and you do feel a little bit loss of response. But maybe that's not quite important to you or maybe you don't notice the response in general. Give it a shot. You might like the speed and in general, that's what it's intended for. It's intended for higher cruising speed and higher efficiencies and it definitely nails that and it does that very, very well as you can see here. It's okay, mommy, I don't see the shade. Switch on my style, I'll take any lane. Switch on my cup, I kill any pain. Look what you've done. I'm a star boy. Look what you've done. Oh, look what you've done. I'm a star boy. So now moving to the F3 blade, it was a, a pretty surprising change in performance. I wasn't expecting quite this much of a change in performance, but um, yeah, it's definitely a lot more responsive. It's definitely a lot slower and it's definitely less efficient. So the quad that I'm flying is like 725 grams. It's kind of hefty for such a small little blade. And the motors that I'm using are specifically designed to give me maximum throttle feel, throttle control. And that's probably what most people are noticing when I'm flying very low to the ground is that it's surprising how much control there is. It's it's the motors. It's I'm not as great of a pilot as anybody thinks. The motors are doing most of the work. They're making it really easy to control the altitude. And the props in general, Gemfans Airflow Science is great, so uh, they have good throttle control in overall. The goal of this prop, like I said, is really just response without a whole lot of loss of speed and efficiency. You definitely are trading some speed, more than some speed, quite a bit of speed, and efficiency for that response. And in this case, with a quad that's 720 something grams, it's not quite enough power in my opinion to pull out of dives comfortably like i'm kind of second guessing myself a little bit pulling out of dives because i just don't have the power to keep the quad up and so this is a good prop if you just keep that in mind and you accustom yourself to not having that power if you're flying a quad that's 700 something grams i think if your quad is around 600 grams this prop is awesome and it's pretty much the only prop I would recommend for a 600 gram quad because a 580, 600 gram quad because you want that high response. So you might as well get that high response because why else are you flying a, a light quad? It's to have that super high response, super good flight feel and this prop is definitely going to give it to you. Swapping from the F3 to the F4 blade felt a lot closer to the 521 blade that I had. The speed on this prop is comparable to the 5.21 blade, but both the F3 and the F4 at the top end, they ring out. This quad, again, is not light. It's 725-ish grams. It, it, the motors are 1870 kV. It's running 6S. There's a lot of power in this thing. It's got the ability to ring those props out, and they definitely ring out at maximum RPM. If the quad was lighter, if it dropped like 50 grams, I probably wouldn't get that ringing out of the prop. In this, in the case of this prop, the speed is definitely there. 
and the power to pull out of dives is also there, but it's a little bit different than the 5.21 inch prop because of the larger diameter. So while the quad has plenty of power, you can pull out of dives, you can do all that stuff great. Something about having more disc area just gives you more ability to pull out of dives. Not something about it, it's pretty obvious. You just have more disc area. You have more control surface to work with, more spinning surface. So it's gonna be it's gonna be easier to compensate for the overall load that's coming down on the props and they have to they have to deal with. Having the 5.25 two one inch props, it definitely gives you the ability to pull out of dives easier. It definitely gives you kind of this like feeling of being able to waft out of things with ease while having a, a 5.1 or 5.079 inch prop even with high pitch, doesn't quite give you that same kind of feeling. But in this case, this prop is super fast, super powerful, not quite as responsive as the F3, a little bit more responsive than the 521 prop, and it also feels nice. If you're running a quad in the 680 to 710 gram weight class, I think this prop is perfect for that. Maybe a lower, lower weight, of course. You can run it on a 580 gram quad, but uh, it's probably gonna be super fast and sometimes you don't want all that speed, but it depends on the KB you're running and how your quad is set up. Again, all the setup of the quad matters, usually more than the prop itself. So now looking at all the props together, it's pretty easy to tell them apart. You need to try them on your quad, however, because I'm trying them on specifically a 700 and something gram quad. If you're running a lighter quad, you're gonna want the lower pitch blades at the higher response blades because that's really why you're running the lighter quad. You might as well have the best performance you can and speed is usually high enough. You just give it more KV and you're gonna get more speed. So that's that's fine. Uh, but if you're running a quad that's a little bit heavier, the F4 blade is going to be a better choice for you because it, it is really annoying or maybe even unsafe to not have the power to stop the quad when you absolutely need to. And it's just concerning trying to pull out of dives and not having the power there when you need it. So I would say the threshold point for the F3 blade is really gonna be like 675, 680 grams. Beyond that, you're really probably gonna prefer the F4 blade. However, you can go for the F3 blade if you want the really super high response because you can fly really smoothly with that super high response, which is really, really nice. Now the 5.21 blade, that prop is really just designed for higher speed and higher efficiency, higher cruising speed and higher efficiency, and it definitely nails that, specifically for the higher weight quads that we're flying today, because that was the whole point, is that our quads weigh so much that we just need a little bit more disc area to carry all that weight. And so when you run the 5.21 inch prop on a quad that's 730 to 750 grams, the overall flight control like being able to pull out of dives and the overall ability to stop yourself and all that stuff, it feels similar to a 580, 600 gram quad with the F3 prop, which was the whole point. But you do lose a little bit of the response because of the larger blade. And even going to a bigger motor, which is what we've got now, a huge motor, you still don't quite get that response back. However, with the giant motors that we have now, which around 2506, it's not 2506, but it's also 1870 KV with 6S. It's a really powerful motor. The F3 blade on these big motors that have super power <laughs> feels phenomenal, but you're gonna lose more response on a smaller motor going to a heavier load prop. So I personally would prefer to stick to the lower pitch lighter props. And if you're running a quad that's beyond 650 grams, you just need a bigger motor. 2306 and 2207, in my preference, my personal opinion, is just too small. There just isn't enough power, there isn't enough control. I need more, I, I, just, I just need more. So that's why I moved to the larger motors and designed this, this new motor, new stator, to do what I wanted to do. And I hope this video was really helpful for you, and thanks for watching. Floss your teeth, bye-bye.